Welcome to 99th Monkey Liberty News for Friday, January 31st, 2014. Happy Chinese New Year, the year of the horse. So I guess maybe we'll finally get somewhere this year. Uh, hopefully it'll be somewhere good. I am beginning today with an, a couple of InfoWars articles, uh, things that are have been going on. And I just wanted to mention this, which uh, was news yesterday, but I wasn't aware of it. It, it broke after I uh, did the video yesterday. So I definitely want to mention it today because I, I think it is significant. Chief of police harassed by feds placed on leave after signing pledge to uphold the Constitution. And... Uh, I won't really get into this story um, deeply. This guy went to a Sheriff Mack conference and uh, signed a pledge to uphold the Constitution. And as far as I know, most law enforcement agents in the U.S. Uh, swear an oath to the Constitution when they are given their job. So this is really nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, that this man did nothing, certainly nothing unlawful, but he was fired for participating in a Sheriff Mack conference. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that lawsuits will be filed and uh, spread the word about this. This is, I think, this is a you know has potential to spark the interest of many, many Americans who are, you know, asleep or partially asleep because everybody knows that law enforcement people take an oath to, the, to uphold the Constitution. And this man was fired for it. And this, uh, the news about D'Souza uh, being arrested is, is uh, several days old. But I wanted to mention it because uh, now there's evidence that According to InfoWars, Dershowitz legal experts say vindictive D'Souza indictment came from higher up. And this is an interesting story to follow. I believe this man was planning a film, a kind of an expose on Hillary Clinton. And I have, although he had produced a film about America recently, I, my, my feeling is that... Uh, he probably was considered a threat to Hillary's possible run for the presidency in 2016, and this is a move to neutralize him before he had an opportunity to make the film about her. So hopefully either he'll be able to make it or somebody else will be able to pick up that ball and run with it. Now I want to shift gears a little bit. Uh, there's a general feeling in the Christian community, at least many of the people that I interface with, you know, charismatic, prophetic movement, whatever you want to call it, that it's somehow unspiritual to be involved in politics, to express opinions about what's going on in the world, uh, to have any kind of passion about uh, American and world current events. And I want to address that just a little bit. I've, I've been thinking about that. Uh, and one, on one hand, it does make some sense to me that uh, it is m most effective to interface with God and uh, ask for Him to bring about justice and uh, ask for Him to, you know, vindicate good people who are being mistreated and defamed uh, that's very, prayer is very effective there's a Bible verse that says the uh, fervent prayer of the righteous man affects avails much or something along those lines I fully believe that I fully and completely with all my heart believe in interfacing with God in prayer and uh, worship and asking him to uh, be involved. But, you know, what God said to Adam was um, basically administer what goes on on the earth. And to a large degree, I feel that many things are our responsibility. 
God entrusted the earth to us and uh, he holds us responsible for what goes on here. Mario Murillo is one of the uh, really great Christian leaders who currently is uh, expressing opinions about many things pertaining to politics, what's going on in our world. This is his blog, and just as an example, this just happened to be his most recent uh, blog entry, Christian Film Stripped of Best Song Oscar Nomination. And uh, I'm not focusing on this particular article, but rather on his blog in general, because he is engaged in, in politics, and uh, he does become involved. And I, I'll do a few more examples here. Um, here from InfoWars, 55 bodies and zero trials at the Florida School for Boys. Now, this is a news article today, which I believe is significant. But I'm including it because um, this is the kind of news, uh, current event, whatever, that Christians um, can certainly take a stand about. Certainly the people who live in the area of this school can uh, ask, you know, who did this? And require some accountability from the people who were responsible for these atrocities. So, you know, us as Christians requiring accountability uh, is a significant part of, of what we what we can do on the earth and I just I want to go back into history a little bit because uh, what we see as the church now historically has not always been so and certainly there's always been corruption in in the church because it has been historically a seat of power uh, and of course that always attracts, seats of power always attract uh, people who are corrupt. But even in all of its, you know, blemishes and wrinkles, the church has been a voice for justice. And uh, this, this is from um, a website called lifeissues.net, the churches and the social gospel. And this article actually begins by mentioning, you know, that, that the church does, there are issues with the church, that there are problems. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to skip down to a couple paragraphs. With that being admitted, something else also needs to be said. The argument that the media and not the churches are the real guardian of the poor is based upon selective evidence and a very bad memory. One needs only to look back into history or just look around today to see another picture. The churches have been and still are at those places with the poor where nobody else wants to be. The churches, for all their faults and infidelities, ultimately were the key moral ingredient in the abolition of slavery, the founding and legitimizing of labor unions, the push for government health care, the rise of feminism, the push for the equality of races, and the ecological movement, because historically they were the major moral instrument in shaping of the conscience of secularity itself. The Enlightenment has its roots in Judeo-Christianity. And of course, you know, we know people who see things from the point of view from which we see them are very aware that uh, there also was evil. There was definitely weeds and, and tares mixed together in uh, some of these issues like the, the labor unions and government health care and even feminism as a tool to destroy the family. But that's, that's what happens. Um, that's what, what the evil people do, the cabal, uh, however you want to refer to them. They find good causes and uh, get involved and twist them to serve their ends. But just as another example of um, the church, uh, and, and this is a, there's a lot of information here. This is a website about the history of the black church. And I have scrolled down to uh, this portion, early anti-slavery efforts by religious communities. 
and uh, opposition to slavery in some religious communities began in the colonial era. Carter Woodson mentioned the Quakers and an early anti-slavery leader, John Woolman. More can be learned about this member of the Society of Friends by reading John Woolman's efforts in, in behalf of freedom. There are a lot of references in, uh, on this website. But I'm just using this as an example of how uh, the, the church did, at least portions of the church, have taken moral stands on issues and have helped to shape our culture, our society in positive ways. And for us to uh, withdraw from our culture and spend all of our time in prayer, while on some levels I, I agree that that can be effective, uh, certainly Jesus did not spend all of his time on, in prayer on the mountain. Most of his time was spent interacting with people, um, healing them, talking to them about their problems, making social commentary. A lot of Jesus' teachings were, you could call them, social commentary. And uh, I believe one of the reasons it's crucial for us to be communicating with people, um, I'm not saying maybe not be directly involved in politics, but... Uh, blog, speak, communicate, um, post on Facebook about your political views. Um, this is significant and crucial because, if you're a Christian because the exercise of people's free will uh, can be, you know, if people are more aware of w what is really going on, they can be more effective in the exercise of their free will. And, and the exercise of human free will significantly impacts upon what, what goes on. I mean, for one thing, it, you know, it can either bring about judgment when people behave a certain way, or it can bring about uh, restoration and healing. And there's that great scripture, if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will hear them and heal their land. So just, you know, the importance, the significance of us speaking out has a lot to do, uh, even if we don't on a large scale impact upon politics or whatever, upon leaders, uh, our speaking out can help to turn people and help them exercise their free will in a way that, that brings healing and blessing and restoration. And with the Super Bowl coming up, I, I want to uh, focus on that free will. I just did a search on YouTube here, Occult Ceremony Super Bowl. Now, I'm not even recommending that you watch any of these because it's, it's kind of disheartening to watch some of these, to be quite honest. Uh, but just to generally be aware that uh, halftime recently, the... the Super Bowl halftime has been more or less an occult ceremony, occult ritual. And when people sit and watch this, uh, there is a certain level of spiritual contribution that they are making. Whether they are aware of it or not, they, people who watch this are participating in an occult ritual. And this is the point of free will. If people are aware of this, they can consciously exercise their free will and not participate, walk out, whatever. Um, not just not, not even watch the Super Bowl if people can, are willing to be that extreme. Uh, just for a little more information about this, these ideas about uh, these these very public uh, satanic occult rituals that uh, people who, who passively watch are actually participating in. Uh, from Mark Dice's, this is just Mark Dice's YouTube channel, and his, his first 
uh, list, his first playlist here is Illuminati symbolism in music videos, TV shows, and movies. And he has a lot here if you need to educate yourself. Again, these are not pleasant to watch. But if, if, you, if you do not have enough of an understanding about some of these issues uh, that, you can, that you can communicate fairly intelligently, this is where you can educate yourself on Mark Dice's YouTube channel. And, you know, the, the reason much of this is so significant um, is because we are created in the image of God. And when we exercise our free will to participate, whether consciously or unconsciously, in some of these, uh, we are, it releases things in the spirit world. There is, you know, there's currency in the spirit world. And uh, some people like to say that faith is the currency of, of the kingdom of heaven. And I, I think it's reasonable to say that. Um, but there's also this this dark currency, and some people refer to it as luge. And this is uh, the website Godlike Productions. And here's an article: If this world's a luge farm, then everything makes sense. Now, uh, some people believe, and I don't happen to hold this belief, obviously, that the Earth was created by aliens. Uh, reptilians, whatever, who want to uh, generate loose because they feed off of it. I do happen to believe that demons, uh, demonic entities, uh, evil fallen angels, and, uh, and dark beings feed off of loose and blood sacrifice and, and loose or even spilled blood probably. And uh, this article cites Monsters, Inc. as, uh, as being a, um, an example of this. And uh, it is. I mean, if you watch Monsters, Inc. with this idea, you can see uh, it, this, it's a perfect illustration of this. And, of course, in Monsters, Inc., uh, at the end, they, they discovered that it was um, more beneficial to everybody to make the children laugh than to make them afraid. And there's a spiritual truth in that, too. Uh, but, you know, I won't, I won't get too deeply into that. Here is just strictly the definition of louche, if you just want a quick definition here. And I don't completely agree with this definition obviously because I do not believe that the earth was created by aliens. Uh, I believe that uh, obviously I, I believe that the creator God, God who is love, created the earth and uh, intends it to be a paradise, created it as a paradise and intends it to be a paradise. It was Adam who uh, made the decision to um, eat the fruit, which opened doors for a whole lot of unpleasantness. But Jesus reversed what Adam did in that act of disobedience. So we, we definitely have the opportunity to uh, live lives that are fairly loose free From Natural News... Bring love and light back on the planet. Uh, that's definitely a happy thought. And uh, someone posted this on Planet Info Wars the day after Christmas. And uh, it's love overcomes. And just from a more biblical point of view, certainly love does overcome. And we know from the Bible that God is love. And that perfect love casts out all fear, and uh, so we we can we can live without that shadow, that dark shadow of fear and other negative emotions, if we exercise our free will and make the choices that will that will lead us onto that path. And with that, I 
Hope that you will make wise choices with your free will this weekend and always. Hope that you have a pleasant weekend. Thanks for tuning in for today's 99th Monkey Liberty News. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hoping that you will love one another, take care, and insist on liberty.